Jimmy Ishii from Memphis offers two starters, actually elements of the sort of tasting menu at his restaurant. One is shrimp scampi tempura with plum sauce. Then Michael Lamonaco prepares a two-fisted entree from New York City. It's a dish for two, including a ribeye steak, horseradish mashed potatoes, and turban squash saute. Then Debbie Gold serves dessert from the American restaurant in Kansas City. White chocolate cake with a luxurious tapioca sauce served with kumquat ice cream. Seki Sui of Japan, a big restaurant in Memphis, is extremely popular. In fact, owner Jimmy Ishii opened a second operation. The usual panoply of Japanese items are offered, but in the back, a small dining room serves a formal setting for an eight-course meal. One of the items is shrimp scampi tempura. This is a shrimp butter fried it and marinated with salt, pepper, and uh, garlic, and olive oil, but just like scampi. And we make tempura for this. And he's he gonna make tempura. Put in a flour, and this is a tempura flour. Tempura flour is more light flour and a little starchy. Tetsuya Misako, who assists, deep fries the shrimp. Also, this sauce is, we call a plum sauce. Actually, we name the plum sauce, but its ingredient is uh, honey, French dressing, and uh, barbecue sauce, and teriyaki sauce, and the garlic is in this. The second course utilizes a popular Japanese item, dried mullet fish roe, which will be wrapped in cucumber and pickled radish. This is a dried mullet fish roe from Taiwan. Uh, we got it from the fright. This is uh, uh, called karasumi in Japan, very gourmet uh, fish roe. We boil in the water about 10 minutes. Meanwhile, using an obviously sharp knife, the chef cuts a long strip of cucumber.
After 10 minutes in boiling water, the mullet roe is drained, then lightly sautéed in butter. Just like roast it. This is a sliced pickle radish. No. Some of the most innovative cooking in the world is happening in America. Many of the chefs in the forefront are in New York City, and one of those chefs is Michael LaMonaco. He learned his love of hearty, honest flavors from his mother, who would no doubt enjoy this, ribeye steak with horseradish mashed potatoes. The chef removes a double portion from the whole ribeye. And now, I'm going to French the bone. Clean that up so it makes a great presentation. fresh black pepper. Should always add a little extra salt to this. It's a big piece of meat. You want to season this well. And that salt crust is what really makes a rib steak sear and develop a nice char. Olive oil. I'm going to give this a nice char on one side char on the second side, about three or four minutes on each side, and then it'll go into the oven for about 10 minutes. And from there, it'll be finished and ready for slicing. Great. Good color. Char the second side. While that second side is charring, we'll go to make our margarita chili sauce. This takes three chili peppers. It's not a very hot or spicy dish, but it's very flavorful. Using poblano peppers, using a chipotle pepper, which is a smoked jalapeno that I rehydrated and pureed, and using New Mexico 
dried chilies that I also rehydrated with some water. So we have two chili pastes and one fresh pepper, the poblano, which we've roasted. I peel the poblano pepper, roast it whole over an open fire or under a broiler or even out on a barbecue. It started with diced Vidalia onion. Chili peppers. Cook with the onions, cook the chili peppers, add some chipotle, some New Mexico. some lime juice. Some orange juice. We'll let that reduce with some honey. While that's reducing, let's put our roast in the oven at 375 for about 12 minutes. I'm just going to heat a little bit of veal stock or beef stock to finish my sauce. That's nicely reduced. Now I'm ready to add some tequila. I'm using a good gold tequila. This is where the margarita part comes into the sauce. Tequila. and a little bit of an orange liqueur. Just cook off the alcohol a little bit. We have some orange zest. Wanna cook that in there. And now we can add our stock and we'll let this reduce just for a minute while we finish roasting our beef. Meanwhile, boiled Yukon gold potatoes are pureed in a food mill. To this, I add butter to hot cream. The potatoes are seasoned with salt and black pepper. Incorporate that. Ice creamy mashed potatoes. I want the potatoes to absorb that cream or milk or light cream. The cream and butter are added in two steps. I put half of it in, now I'll put the second half. Fresh horseradish. I'm using a very fine rasp. Another flavoring, chopped scallions. Finally, the turban squash saute. The seeds and outside skin are removed, then a piece is sliced. I'm just gonna slice this. The squash is started in olive oil and whole cumin seeds. Let that cook for just a minute. A little salt, not very much salt, easy on the salt. A little fresh black pepper. Some corn, cut off the cob. A little bit of tomatoes, some pear tomatoes to roast with that. And some of our corn. of butter, 
Don't even need it. Just adds a little extra creaminess to it. And that's ready to go. We're ready to serve our roast now. The sauce was finished with butter. Be sure and let the meat rest before carving. Poblano peppers, just to finish it off. The culinary guiding lights at the American restaurant in Kansas City are Debbie Gold and her husband Michael Smith. Chef Gold got her early training in France in the mid-80s, not easy given the gender-bent French kitchens. Then it was three restaurants in Chicago. Here's her warm white chocolate cake. The tapioca is started by boiling milk with sugar. Okay, now you can see it's starting to slightly simmer. So this is good, we can start. I'm gonna slowly add the tapioca and stir. Tapioca lets out a lot of, obviously, starch, so it's gonna get sticky. This is small pearl tapioca. So as I pour in the tapioca, I'm gonna stir it. And then now we want this to cook for about 20 minutes, we want the tapioca to get uh, soft and the uh, milk will reduce around it so it'll become kind of thick. Meanwhile, the cake is started with almond meal, sugar, dark rum, and egg yolks already in the bowl. Mix this, we're gonna take this and we're gonna add our chocolate to it. Melted white chocolate. Okay, so now we're going to add our chocolate. Beaten egg whites. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the whites to begin with to break up this up because it's so dense. And then we can add more and it'll, it'll be looser, it won't be so hard. I'm going to try and fold this in real nice. The finished batter was put into ring molds. I'm going to fill up the molds. You don't want to overfill them. But to the top is good. Bake at 375 for 30 minutes or until firm. Boiled cream and coconut milk finish the tapioca. Stir that in. Now the good part is the coconut milk. The tapioca is simmered for three to four minutes, removed to a bowl, covered with plastic wrap, and cooled. So now we've got our cakes. And what I've got is the uh, tapioca here. And if you can tell, it, as it's cooled, it's uh, absorbed a lot of the liquid that we added. So I'm going to add, you can add either regular milk or I'm going to add just a little bit more of the coconut milk so we get a nice flavor. Spoon it out of my plate. Grab 
have my cake. Now my suggestion for this is a nice set. Uh, we've got some kumquats that have been candy. So what I'm going to do is drizzle some of the juice around the plate because the sweetness will be a really nice addition to the sauce. Throw a couple of the kumquats on the plate. And then, just to finish it off, a kumquat ice cream. Right on top. 